Hello folks and welcome to Shoot Create Captivate. In today's session, I'm going to talk about how I optimize Lightroom for the best performance uh, within my environment, okay? Now we're gonna start at the ground roots and we're going to touch base on how we've got our system backed up and how we got our drive structures on our system because it does impact the speed at which we work through files in Lightroom, okay? We've got two external drives connected to our, our system and you can consider this as a first tip, okay? Um, in terms of backup process. So we've got a work drive and a work backup. So those two are backed up to each other all the time, all right? These two drives are connected by a USB 3 port to our computer system here. Now USB 3 ports allow us to transfer uh, or read and write data a lot faster. And those drives that are connected are high speed drives at uh, 7200 RPM. Um, the other alternative to those drives are SSD, which read at very, very fast speeds, uh, but they cost a lot more than uh, your regular drives, okay? So those are connected to our system by USB 3 ports, okay? So in terms of the structuring of our uh, folder, st or our folder structure here, we've got a date and name of our client, okay? So it allows us to rapidly find our client's name just by using the operating system search uh, features. And what we're going to do is we're going to throw this file into Lightroom. Okay, but before we do that, uh, we just wanna make sure that we're in the library mode here, or library module rather. And all we're going to do is just drag and drop the folder into the window, all right? It's going to open up this window here, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to select our build previews. Now, instead of selecting the usual one-to-one, -one, which takes forever to load up, uh, we're not even going to select standard. We're going to select embedded and sidecar. All right, so now you're gonna ask me what is in embedded and sidecar. Now, basically when you shoot a raw file, uh, in order to see that raw file, the camera produces a JPEG view of the image, okay? It may not be full quality uh, when you're viewing it in Lightroom, but it's gonna allow us to um, go through our files a lot quicker. So instead of trying to build a full-on one-to-one preview of the JPEG, uh, we're gonna tell Lightroom to look at an embedded sidecar, that little JPEG file that resides inside your raw, uh, raw file. Okay, so what happens now is when I import that, that import goes extremely quickly. Okay, so there's two operations in progress here. So let's just double click that and wait for it to pop up. Okay, so fetching initial previews, five or six, and you'll see that uh, the import goes a lot, lot quicker, right? And we're almost done, right? So that's 76 files, I think. Let's have a look initial previews, fetching initial previews, task complete. All right, so that's it. All right, so you're gonna scroll down and all of our files are imported, including these videos at the end here too, <laughs> that are recorded of the session. All right, so we're still in library module here, okay? So the reason why I've done that is that it creates a very speedy workflow in terms of, um, in terms of our culling process, okay? so. We're not gonna switch away from library module, okay? And we're not waited for any one-to-one -one previews to build or any of that silly stuff. Uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna have a full view of our picture, all right? So we can rapidly scroll through images and there's no waiting, there's no loading, none of that nonsense. It's really, really fast, okay? So we're going through it rapidly, 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 rapidly. Very fast and we can go through it insanely fast okay there's no delays okay you also notice that it says embedded preview okay so when it comes to the cutting process there's no requirements of having um bits of software like photo mechanic this is all doing it really really fast i mean the the, the call process is extremely extremely fast you can just press n and you've got the previews here. If you've got a second monitor, you'd have the image up on the second monitor and you'd blaze through your, 
your culling process. So that speeds up the workflow, but it's also optimizing Lightroom to uh, work a lot faster. You know, if you if you just imported the standard way and it was a raw file, um, you'd have to wait and it would say loading and blah, blah, blah. Um, and you'd be forced to create your um, your your one-to-one -one previews, which takes forever, okay? You know, so we've got the embedded inside cost. So we don't have to worry about, um, you know, the glitches that you would have if you didn't build the one-to-one -one previews and then you have that little loading icon there and things would take forever. All right, so that's kind of um, tip number one, guys. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at some of the other performance uh, areas or other key areas to look at in terms of optimizing Lightroom, okay? Not everybody's got super powerful computers. Um, so this, these tips over here are gonna help you in terms of um, system performance across the board. So whether you've got a high speed computer like we've got or you've got a lower end PC or laptop or whatever, um, these settings will help uh, get the best performance out of Lightroom. So what we're going to do is gonna click edit. We're gonna go down to preferences. And what we're going to do is go over to performance, okay? So um, by default, um, it's set to use the GPU, your graphics card of your computer, okay? Uh, some lower end systems have got poor graphics cards and you might find that with it being switched on uh, you get all these weird glitches and uh, you can't navigate between images fast enough or um, when you paint with your brush the brush is painting very slow um, and generally you've got poor performance so uh, you'd come in here and you'd switch that off okay uh, for other folks where you um where you've uh, got very high-end graphics cards, then you can switch it on. Actually, what they've done is, is with a new Lightroom, uh, they've actually got this set to auto, all right? With it set to auto, it says, yeah, your system automatically supports full acceleration, all right? So our graphics card is fast enough to run all of the features within Lightroom, okay? Um, so for those of you who's got poor, uh, poor system performance in your GPUs or your graphics cards, uh, this will be switched to off. And I'm guessing that with this intelligence over here, that it would say, look, your, your computers or your graphics card on your computer isn't optimized fast enough for, for Lightroom functionality and it'll turn that features off. So graphics acceleration will be disabled. Okay, I'm gonna leave it on, uh, on auto for my case here. Um, another place to look at increasing the, the cache settings. Okay, this is on five gigabyte. Um, it's not gonna make major differences in terms of uh, performance, um, but you want Lightroom to use that swap disk features or um, the storage space on your computer. You wanna have enough of it so the files can transfer between the operating system and Lightroom optimally and have enough space. So I've increased my size to um, 10 gigabyte. Actually, I'm gonna push it for 20 gigabyte because I've got a big hard drive in the computer, okay? And that would be that in terms of performance over here, okay? So I think the next thing we'll move on to is um, we're gonna talk a little bit about other hardware optimization and um, Obviously, the one thing that they do want you to do on a regular basis is to actually come into file and optimize catalog, okay? Uh, this has been done flipping ages ago. Uh, but it says here, your, your catalog was last optimized on that date, at that time. It's been running slowly. If it's been running slowly and you haven't optimized it recently, optimizing it again may improve performance, okay? So it's a good thing to do that. I might do that later. Uh, but I don't seem to have any, uh, you know, I don't have any performance issues, uh, in all honesty, within Lightroom. It all seems pretty fast and snappy. Um, but we've got a beefy computer. Now, looking at external... Um, influences right uh, we spoke already about having fast hard drives connected to your system 
uh, with a fast connectivity between the hard drive and the operating system. So that's one, one thing to look at. Um, other things that you want to look at is having a computer with a very fast GPU. It allows your computer to think and calculate uh, the, the, f the features and functions that you use within Lightroom. Um, you also want to look at having sufficient RAM. Okay, RAM really helps speed up your entire computer, but also the thinking and transfer process and rendering process of files within Lightroom. So like when you're exporting, um, I've noted before how much of a difference there is between working with a system that's only got eight gig of RAM and working with a system that's got 64 gig of RAM, okay? There's a marked difference in performance and how fast files are transferred out of Lightroom, okay? So, um, not long ago, I worked on a lower end system that had, had eight gigabytes, all right? And that's kind of like a minimum re um, requirement uh, for Lightroom and even Photoshop. Um, you know, you're going to start getting some optimal performance when you've got something like 16 gigabyte of RAM, a nice fast graphics card, and a very big CPU. Um, there's there's so many CPUs out there. Uh, we won't even go into it. You can research your own uh, CPU information. There's a lot out there. Uh, there's a lot in Google. There's a lot of guys speaking about fast CPUs on YouTube. Um, but that all affects the overall performance of of Lightroom. So yeah, um, I went from eight gig to 64 gig and I noted how fast importing was. And I also noted how fast it was to actually export a file from Lightroom. And um, you know, this is from a raw format. Okay, so I'm gonna hit that over to, to the desktop and you'll see that within no time, we're gonna have a file residing on the desktop, which is there. Look how fast that exported, extremely fast, and it was out of the system and done, okay? So having lots of RAM on your system can really help shave off time in terms of how fast things are gonna export from, from the system, okay? I've switched over to development module, yeah? And you'll see that actually our performance there is slightly slower because it's building those previews that we're going long, okay? But that doesn't matter now because we've already um, we've already culled our shots, and now we can just work along and do our edits accordingly, and um, you know you can get your client work out a lot quicker. And obviously, like I said, once you've got um, once you've got this nailed down, you'll notice that all of your performance will start peaking, and you'll get the best performance out of uh, Lightroom. Something else that uh, I do often to optimize the catalogs in my system, okay, I've got an additional backup drive that I connect to the system. It's actually an archive drive, okay. So what happens is, uh, let's come back into Lightroom here. I'll go to library and we'll go to the D drive, which is that working drive. I don't store all of my work in Lightroom, okay. Uh, if you start storing every single shoot inside Lightroom. It's gonna bog it down. No matter how fast and how powerful your system is, it's gonna bog it down, okay? So, if I've got a shoot where I've now done and dusted and I've got it edited and the client's work is out, what I do then is actually move that folder out of Lightroom, okay? I'll move the folder out of Lightroom and I'll put that folder all right, so let's, for example, this one here. I'll take this folder and I'll drag it over to an archive drive, which is also backed up twice. And I'll remove it from the list, okay? So my library isn't bloated. So pretty much what I've got inside here in this working drive over here um, is stuff that I need to work on. Some of, this, some of the work is already complete. I need to just shift it over to my... Um, my... Uh, my archive drive, where it's stored there, and not forever either. It's stored there until we no longer require it and it gets deleted out. So effectively, I'm trying to keep my um, all the files inside Lightroom um, minimized, okay? So if, 
if there's a shoot I've got complete it goes out it goes onto the on onto the archive drive and it's no longer in 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 Lightroom okay so that's also another way that you keep the optimal performance of Lightroom in general okay so I think we've got it now nailed down to those couple of points um, folks thank you very much for tuning in um, down in the links below uh, we do have our uh, links to our training website um, www.shootcreatecaptivate.com uh, you can tune into any of our tutorials also please feel free to join us on Instagram and Facebook also the links are down in the uh, comments below and uh, let me know how you how how well things turn out for you and we'll see you in another session cheers for now